So I'm going to talk about the arising of a Buddha in this world, that he had such great, boundless, profound compassion that was endless. And he had this kindness, this metta, karuna, for all beings, which uh, inspired him to aspire to this awakening, the self-awakening. And he had this aspiration through this compassion for every single being in this realm, the cycle of samsara. So that's an extremely important event, the coming into this world of a Buddha, something that is of great significance for all humans. Because after his awakening, he taught the Dhamma. And then from those teachings, there were those who practiced following in line, and they received the fruits of the practice in line with what was appropriate. So if there was no Buddha, then there would be no teachings of the Dhamma, and there would be no awakened Sangha, no one to spread these teachings down to our present day and age. So monks like Mpuman, Mpucha, or any of the great teachers who we have respect for, who practice well and correctly, they wouldn't have come to be. And we wouldn't know about this path of practice. So being born into this world, we all want to find happiness. And no one wants to suffer. But there are some kinds of happiness which lead us into suffering. That even though there's happiness in the present moment, um, it gives us the fruits of suffering. So there are some kinds of works, uh, work that people engage in, which brings them a lot of misery. Or some people who don't keep a decent level of morality, and they think that that will bring them happiness, but really what they're doing is creating the causes for suffering. And so they meet with that suffering. But there are also some kinds of activities which bring suffering to us in the present moment, but they create the conditions for happiness in the future. So for us, for example, the people who come to do good deeds, to create goodness, it's something that can be quite difficult to do, but it brings happiness in the future. So with us coming to take birth in this world, having been born, if we don't practice the Dhamma, then we're just born into delusion. We live our lives filled with delusion and we, del and we die in a deluded state. And we don't know what uh, the purpose of our lives are. So for this life, we have the good opportunity to have a human body. Um, and this is very important because it's the foundation for goodness. It's the foundation for making our minds human as well. And it helps us to understand the Dhamma. Because we have a brain that's able to think and contemplate that can help to develop our minds. And the nature of every single mind is that of peace. But it's just problems arise in it due to the sense impressions that come into the mind. When these sense impressions arise, then ignorance and craving and clinging come up as well and they cover over the heart. And then the mind starts to proliferate in ways that cause it sadness and misery. So we need to try to develop our minds to be better, to be higher. We need to cultivate them, to raise them up. And when we're born into this world, um, we naturally experience physical development. Our bodies grow up. And then we also develop in terms of the knowledge we gain through our studies. And also we develop in our occupations as well. But we need to further this, to develop our hearts too. 
so that our hearts grow and they get raised up, they become higher. And we're very fortunate that we have this opportunity of a human birth to study the Dhamma of the Buddha, to know about this middle path of practice that he taught, that when we practice, our hearts are able to be relieved of suffering here in the present moment, in this present life. So that all of us now have faith is something very important. And the arising of this faith is not an easy thing. It requires us to have built up our paramis for a long time now, that we do have this belief, this inspiration in the Buddha's teachings. And so for the lay people, having this faith is very important for the Buddhist religion because the lay people then make offerings which uh, provide for the physical aspects of the Buddhist religion. The monks or the monastics can then survive. They can stay on and live this holy life. And the monks also need faith as well, a belief in the teachings of the Buddha, a belief in these four noble truths that the Buddha taught about suffering, the cause of the suffering, so its cessation and the path of practice leading to that cessation. And having seen and known what suffering is like already, the monks then dedicate themselves to following this path of practice so that niroda, cessation, becomes clear for them, so that, that their hearts are relieved from these defilements or kilesas. And they do this as best as they are able to. So having this faith um, propels the mind to practice. It provides incentive to practice. And even though for the laity there may be a lot of work that uh, they have to engage in, still you try to put effort into it. This does make things more difficult, and so the monks are in a good situation where these requisites are provided for them so that they have the time to practice. You don't have to be involved in um, worldly obligations so much. And so it's very fortunate that lay people have this faith, and they use that to assist the monks. So the monks have this great opportunity to follow this path of practice. To study the Dhamma and to find the Dhamma there within their own hearts. To try to bring their minds to peace through keeping them on a single object. So chanting through Tipiso, for example, or this can be shortened down to just the word Arahan or just Buddha. We do this so the mind settles down and gathers into a state of samadhi. So we see that faith develops into effort. When there's a lot of this sata, this faith, it becomes a power for our practice. It turns into virya, this effort. So there's the effort that arises in building up goodness, in generosity, in taking on the precepts, in listening to teachings of Dhamma, in practicing meditation, developing mindfulness, and cultivating wisdom. And even though we may have to work a lot, you can still practice as well, and maybe chant while we're working. And when we get back home, we can do meditation. So even though we may be working, you can also build up goodness, do good deeds, and skillful deeds while you're working as well. So this faith, it develops into effort. So we have faith in this path of practice that will lead us to the Dhamma. And we have this uh, chanda, or this uh, liking or desire for the practice. So a desire to develop uh, generosity to take on the precepts to practice meditation. And then we have the efforts to complete these things, to do them, to 
um, have a goal and to try to reach that goal. And really everything that we do, reaching any kind of goal, it requires effort. And it's the same for the goal of freeing ourselves from suffering. This depends upon our efforts. So for the monastics, you bring up this effort in the practice. And for the lay people, there's this effort to cultivate goodness, to develop merit through the acts of generosity, of virtue, and of meditation, of dana, sila, bhavana. Uh, but for monks, this is the path of sila, samadhi, and panya, of virtue, of samadhi, collectedness of mind, and of wisdom. We put our efforts into this. We are sincere in doing this, in abandoning all unskillful things, in cultivating skillfulness in our hearts, and of meditating, of bringing the mind to peace and to a state of radiance. We contemplate to see that in this life that we have been born into, one year passes, and then the next passes, and the next passes, and in not long, 60 years have passed already. So in the time that we have left, before we get to the age of 80, then what should we do? We need to really be sincere in building up goodness in this world, using this time to uh, create good deeds. And just like how the Buddha had developed his Bharamis for such a long time, and developed this kindness and compassion that he used to teach the Dhamma after his awakening, teaching out of concern for all beings. So for us, whether we are lay, laity or monastics, uh, we put our efforts into the practicing of these teachings, into following the footsteps of the Buddha, so that we gain for ourselves an understanding of the Dhamma, we see it. And we don't see the Dhamma anywhere else. It happens right here within our own hearts. And when we contemplate well, then we will come to know this. So when our minds are peaceful, and when we go about contemplating into the Dhamma, we will see the Dhamma. Because really the Dhamma is all around us. It's around us constantly. So we can contemplate external things as well. Just like seeing a leaf falling to the ground. If we look at that and reflect upon that, we'll see it's like the lives of beings falling away. And if our samadhi is complete and full, just by seeing that we can attain to the Dharma without difficulty. But this depends upon the Bharami that we have created before. And so before our bodies start to really degenerate and decay, we use this opportunity to build up our barami, to raise up our minds higher than what they are right now. In this life that we have left, we're sincere in this. We have this opportunity to have gained a human birth. So we should use that for the highest goal there is, which is the Dhamma. Because we see that even though we may search for things in this world and find them, we just depend upon them for this life. But our lives don't last long. And then we have to throw away all the things we've gained in this world. And even though we have the feeling that really these things are ours, still we have to just toss them all away. So we should try to change the feeling that we have about the things of this world now, before we die. Bring up the feeling that really these things aren't ours, that they belong to this world, that we just use them temporarily. We train ourselves like this, seeing all things as inconstant, as stressful, as not self. Seeing them all as empty, that there's no true self within them. That these things, they're not mine, they don't belong to others. Just like how we chant, Sabe uh, Dhamma Anatta, that all things, all phenomena, are uh, uh, not self. And just like this body, it's anicca, dukkha, anatta. It's empty. Everything is empty. And if we try to find a being there, a self, a me or a mine, we won't be able to because it's just not there. So the body is merely a body. 
And that means that we've seen the Dhamma, just seeing this, that a body is just a body. So we look at the things external to us as well and see that they're just that, they're just nature to be that way. There's no being there, there's no me, there's no other. We contemplate in this way, contemplate seeing the state of the Dhamma within this body and within all things. And in doing that, we understand the Dhamma. So for those who have faith in the Buddha, the Dhamma, and the Sangha, this faith becomes the foundation for our practice, a foundation that can take us to seeing the Dhamma, to seeing the truth, to understanding conventions and thereby liberating the heart. Because it's the nature of things to be this way, that they don't last long, that they arise, they stay for a short time, and then they cease. Um, that that's just how things are, and there's, we can't own them. Um, they just stay with us for a very short period of time, and when we die, we can't take any of them with us. That all things really are anatta, they're really not self. They really are stressful, they really are inconstant. When we understand this, then we feel a weariness towards them, and the lust that we have towards them fades from our hearts, that our minds bow into the Dhamma, the, and into Nibbana, rather, Nibbana which is the highest goal that we can reach in this life. So even though we have work to do in this world, um, we should also develop our hearts to be wiser, to be higher, and we have and holds the highest wish, which is seeing the Dhamma. And this really is the most important thing there is. We try to bring up wisdom to, in order to see things clearly. And so we have this faith, and we have a lot of it. And we see that all the wealth that we have in this world, we just use that um, for this life, to sustain this life. And then for the rest of it, uh, we develop generosity, we give it away, we try to build up good deeds, skillful deeds, and do this constantly it's, until it's something very familiar to us. So just like Ananda Pintika and Lady Visaka, they were the foremost in generosity. And the Buddha praised them as being the foremost uh, lay men and lay women, or lay man and lay woman um, in his dispensation. Um, and both of them had attained to the state of Sotapanna. And they had in total uh, attended and served four Buddhas. So it shows the great parami that they had. And they had this very strong faith and a very strong wisdom faculty as well so much so that they had clearly seen into the Dhamma. So for us, we also have faith. Um, and that's something that's a quality that's present within us right now. So from this, we try to develop goodness constantly, and trying to make our minds firmer, higher, until they develop into the highest state possible, until they see into the Dhamma. So we understand that being born into this world, um, having a human birth is something that's very valuable. And we use that to develop our minds, to develop goodness until our hearts become full, until they get raised up into the state of a deva, um, that which is exalted or noble. And when they're in this state, then we can contemplate into uh, anicca, dukkha, anatta, and our minds gain great happiness through doing this. We look at all the things in this world and have no essence to them. That the world has no leader. That the world is insatiable and it's a slave to craving. And if our minds are stuck in this world, then they're never satiated, they're never full. And that shows that craving has engulfed our hearts, that our, our hearts are a slave to this craving. But when our minds do become full, then craving isn't able to affect our minds in any way. 
that our minds become free. They abide above the world. They reach the state of lokutara. They reach the state of uh, the sangha, of uh, nobility. These people have abandoned the defilements following the footsteps of the Buddha. So for us, having this faith, we then put in our efforts, we try to practice, uh, try to uh, find our way to freedom. But even though we have external work, we also need to gauge in internal work as well, this practice of that happens in our hearts. We all try to raise up as much goodness as we can. So I ask for all of you to be healthy, uh, to prosper in your work and in all your wholesome activities. And in this day, my birthday, uh, I ask for all of you to, uh, to grow and to develop in goodness. May you all have long life, uh, beauty, happiness, and strength. May you all receive the wealth, the human wealth, uh, the heavenly wealth, and the wealth of Nibbāna. And may all of you reach Nibbāna.